during the most critical time of the most ambitious professional project I had ever undertaken, the NASA Eclipse Ballooning Project, my world came to a crashing halt. In a hospital room hundreds of miles from home, my three-year-old son was punching me over and over and over, hysterically screaming, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. The nurses stood by, not quite knowing how to help. There was nothing there I could do except to let him get it out. He was over being in pain, over being stuck in a hospital room. Mommy translated into, make it stop. This was a really difficult moment for me, seeing my baby in such extreme distress and not knowing how to fix it. It made me stop and think about the important things in my life. My kids and family come first, of course. I also care a lot about my work. When all of a sudden my work-life balance, really a teeter-totter, went from work to life, it made me take a closer look at understanding why I was feeling so torn in pieces. How did it come to be that this project was taking up so much of my energy? Well, it started with a journey of imagination. A few years ago, I came across an intriguing story it was about a pilot who got his plane full of passengers in just the right place at just the right time to be able to see a quick total solar eclipse from the air. This got me to wondering, why would they risk missing the eclipse just to be able to see it from the air? It turns out these eclipse chasers took that risk because seeing a total solar eclipse from the air is amazing. Not looking at the sun like you would from the ground, but seeing the shadow of the moon sailing across the surface of the Earth. Similar to the feeling astronauts have when they look down on the ground from above, seeing the shadow on the ground is profound. For a brief moment in time, the spectacular happens. The moon turns the sun into nothing but a ghostly halo, and its cold shadow darkens the Earth below. Then I imagined, if the view from, of a total solar eclipse is great from an airplane, what would it be like from a high altitude balloon at 100,000 feet where you can see the curvature of the Earth in the blackness of space? What if our Montana Space Ground students sent up a camera on one of these balloons to capture the spectacle? What if it wasn't just us sending up balloons but student teams from other states as well? Actually, to do it right, we need to do three things. Make it meaningful, make the impacts long lasting, and share that balloon view with a wide audience. These three things pointed me instantly at a solution. Have student teams fly balloons across the country and live stream the total solar eclipse from the edge of space. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? <laughs> if only I had known how tough it would really be. In early 2014, I set out to convince NASA to support the project. They turned me down flat. Everyone thought I was crazy. And maybe I was. No one had ever undertaken a hands-on student project of this magnitude before. Live streaming didn't even exist. We had no idea how to share the live view from the edge of space with a wide audience. Nevertheless, I believed we could figure it out, and we did. We researched and tested, we practiced, we built a partnership with Google and other ballooning companies. Then, when another opportunity came along, this time, we were ready. We won NASA research, resources, support, and funding. Okay, we had support. Now, all we had to do in a year's time was to train 1,000 students from 32 different states to build, test, and practice highly complex systems to be ready for millions of eyes. During this year before the eclipse, I think if I had shown up in any of the students' labs, they would have thrown rotten tomatoes at me. What we asked these students to do was a tall, tall order. It turns out, though, that being tough is part of what made the project worthwhile. If it had been easy, 
it wouldn't have been as interesting or as impactful. It was also this year before the eclipse that my son got sick and the amount of time I spent doing media activities ramped up. Two related questions. My personal question, in light of what's going on with my son, why do I care about this eclipse project? And the relentless question the media kept asking, why should we care about the eclipse? Made me think about the flip question. Why would we not care? Total solar eclipses are rare and one of the most awe-inspiring natural phenomena we can see from the surface of the Earth. What kind of culture do we live in if we have to ask why we should care about such an event? I came to better understand, though, that we don't have the space in our lives to care about things that don't impact us. We can't care about everything or we'd explode. <laughs> Somehow, though, from the way we educate our young people, the way we're influenced by media or communicate science, We've lost touch with part of what makes us human, our curiosity, creativity, our imagination. For me, I came to think about the eclipse as an amazing opportunity to celebrate what it means to be human, to engage our innate sense of wonder and imagination, to collectively pause and share a moment with friends and family, and just be awed. Imagination is a uniquely human trait. It's also one of the most important factors for understanding the world around us and in solving problems. The intersection of two Einstein quotes expresses what I'm getting at. Imagination is more important than knowledge. And we cannot solve problems using the same thinking that created them. I feel like this power of imagination that we're innately born with is somehow stamped out for many of us in our everyday lives. What would happen if we worked to reawaken it? My gut reaction to this question is joy. I find so much joy in being curious, in learning, and in solving problems. Speaking of solving problems, there were more than a few to solve getting to Eclipse Day, but I made it in one piece. My son who is sick, this is a picture of my family at Totality. My son who is sick is sitting on my husband's lap. He's fine now, thank goodness. I'm proud to say that the Eclipse Learning Project was a huge success. We were the first to live stream a total solar eclipse from a space-like perspective. We were the first to fly a constellation of balloons across a continent. Our project was seen by hundreds of millions of people. For me though, the most important result was that a thousand college and high school students had the experience of a lifetime. It makes me feel so proud when they say, I'll never forget what I did, what I saw. It changed my life. I'm gonna show you a bit of footage we collected, collected on Eclipse Day. But before I do, let's start with imagination. Even if it's outside your comfort zone, like standing up here is for me, please close your eyes. You're on a wide prairie on a warm summer day. There's a huge balloon with a capsule hanging underneath. Climb in. You brace for liftoff and then you are airborne, floating gently up into the sky. As you get higher in the atmosphere, you start to be able to see the curvature of the earth and the blackness of space. And it's your lucky day. There's a total solar eclipse coming, and from your vantage point, you can see the shadow of the moon coming and going for miles. Here comes the shadow over the edge now. Open your eyes and check it out. How did it make you feel to embrace your imagination for a moment? I invite you to consider how reawakening your imagination, really reawakening it, might help you solve the problems you're currently dealing with. I invite you to consider what joy you might find if you let your curiosity get the best of you. Then run with it, tail wagging. Thank you. <laughs>